Hi there. Reaper is pretty easily one of the best jobs right now. Even if you're not executing the best rotations, odds are you're still doing pretty well for yourself. This guide is aimed to getting you the smoothest rotation throughout your 1 to 90 journey. Post editor Stefan here. I have a survey sponsorship, which is great because I'm not selling anything. Just for about 45 seconds to a minute of your time filling out a survey about Final Fantasy 14 in your experience, you can help support this channel. You will find the links down below in the description box and in the pinned comment. So I greatly appreciate you guys taking the time to do that. Now back to the video. Reaper 1 to 29. Now, luckily the rotation is pretty straightforward, so we're gonna breeze past these lower levels pretty quickly. Everything you still need to understand though, because it really stacks on top of each other for later rotations. Your first two GCD combos are Slice and Waxing Slice, just two of three of your main GCD combos. We get Shadow of Death at level 10. This is our debuff to our enemy when fighting. We can basically treat this as our running dot. As the tank is pulling, we can apply this to as many enemies as possible. Later, we can get an additional effect once we unlock our job gauge. Level 15, we get Harp. This is a casted range GCD. It resets our global cooldown timer. This is only helpful when the tank is about to pull a boss and you can get an additional attack off on him. Upgrades later down the road as well. Level 20, we get Hell's Ingress and Hell's Egress. Basically, your gap closers and jump back. These allow you to move in and out of AoEs pretty easily, and again, we'll get upgrades later on. Level 25, Spinning Scythe. Thank gosh we have an AoE at this low of level, as this is really going to raise the damage output for you in low level dungeons, which you will probably do when doing the leveling roulette. It also helps to think of this as a single target GCDs, and with Slice, and the AoE GCDs, and with Scythe to help differentiate. Now let's go over a super basic tank pull rotation. Tank pulls trash mob. You'll shadow of death dot each enemy as the tank is pulling with your debuff. Once the tank stops, you can just use spinning scythe for three or more enemies in the vicinity. Once down to two enemies, you can switch to a single target rotation, which is just slice and waxing slice. For boss pulls, it's pretty similar. Tank runs to boss and you'll start with harp. Teleport in using hell's ingress, shadow of death, the boss, and single target rotation you will just want to keep up Shadow of Death every 30 seconds. Moving on to 30 to 50 content, we start with level 30 Infernal Slice, our last single target GCD combo rotation. At level 35, we'll get Whirl of Death. This is the same thing as Shadow of Death, just AoE. So when you are able to hit three or more enemies, use Whirl of Death, which should be for most trash pulls at this point. At level 40, you'll get Arcane Crest. Creates a barrier, nullifying damage up to 10% of your HP. Useful for those accidental oopsie moments in early dungeons. At level 45, we get Nightmare Scythe, your second AoE combo GCD. It is amazing that we have gotten both below 50 and will be allowing us to put out tons of DPS for the party. The tank pulls for this point is just as easy as before, except we have AoE abilities now. Tank will pull trash bombs. You can apply Whirl of Death on three or more enemies as you are running twice usually because it can stack up to 60 seconds. By this time, hopefully the tank is stopped pulling, then spam your AoE GCD abilities. Bosses and trials will be as follows. Cast Harp before the boss pull as tank pulls, Hell's Ingress, Shadow of Death, GCD combo, Slice, Waxing Slice, and Infernal Slice, reapply Shadow of Death as needed. Under level 50, Reaper is pretty straightforward, but now the fun part is when we get our job gauge called the Soul Gauge. At level 50, we unlock Bloodstock, a single target damage ability that costs 50 Soul Gauge and grants a Soul Weaver stack, which we will cover in a minute. We get Soul Gauge at this point by our regular GCD combos, as well as an additional effect under Shadow of Death and Whirl of Death. You get an additional 10 Soul Gauge when an enemy is killed with these debuffs applied, so it's even more important than before to keep this debuff up on enemies at all times. At level 55, we get our AoE version of Bloodstock, which is Grim Swath, Cone AoE, and also Grant Soul Weaver. These will be our two abilities to use our Soul Gauge on for about 15 levels, so get comfortable. Bloodstock is single target, and Grim Swath is our AoE. At level 60, we get Soul Slice, which is an instant GCD that delivers a single target attack of 460 potency, which is pretty huge, and gives you 50 Soul Gauge instantly. We want to use this right after we apply our debuffs for instant usage of our Soul Reaver abilities and continue on as normal after. At level 70, we get 5 abilities, but fear not, let's cover them. We get Gibbet, Gallows, and Guillotine. 
These three abilities are basically a higher tier of our Soul Reaver abilities. Gibbet and Gallows are directly related for single target damage, and Guillotine is our AoE ability. Remember that once you use Bloodstock or Grim Swath, you need to use Gibbet, Gallows, or Guillotine for the proc. If you do not use one of those abilities, then it will go away and you'll lose that stack, which means you'll lose out on the DPS. So if you were in a single target boss fight, you would use Bloodstock, Gibbet, for example. Now when you use Gibbet, you will see that Gallows becomes yellow, but you can't use it. You will need another stack of Soul Reaver or another 50 gauge to access it. Once you have that, you can use Bloodstock again, and then the yellow bordered Gallows. The yellow border just means that it's a stronger version of itself. You are basically going back and forth between these two abilities every time you get a Soul Reaver stack. This actually makes rotation super easy as the proc lasts 60 seconds and just sits there until you get to it again so you know what ability to use next. When you first get into a dungeon, it doesn't matter which one you start with. To begin the cycle, choose either Gibbet or Gallows and then use the procs from there. The AoE version is even simpler. You would just use Grim Swath, which is our AoE Soul Reaver ability, and then Guillotine. Guillotine does not proc Gibbet or Gallows, as Guillotine is our AoE version. So on your next trash pull, you would just use Grim Swath again, and then Guillotine again. Only the single target, Gibbet and Gallows, proc each other. So single target's the only time you're going to have to worry about the yellow borders. Hopefully that makes sense. I really wanted to take the time to explain that because once it clicks, you will never be questioning it again. It's a really nice and easy rotation at this point. I think for me, I just needed more time to figure out the hotbar situation for it to make sense. Just like any other job, we use the yellow border abilities over the other ones since that means they are procced or buffed up. We also get unveiled gibbet and unveiled gallows, which just are the upgrades to those abilities. No action is needed. Since you start at this level when you unlock reaper, let's go over a level 70 tank pull rotation for you. Dungeon pulls will look something like this. Tank pulls mob. You will use Death World as you're running to apply debuff to your enemies. You can do this twice again since it stacks to 60 seconds. You will also use Soul Scythe here so then you can get this ability on cooldown and get your free 50 soul gauge. You will then use your Soul Reaver ability Grim Swath which then opens up to Guillotine. After this we will use our AoE GCD combo to work up to 50 soul gauge again. Use Grim Swath and Guillotine as needed for 3 or more enemies. Make sure to keep that debuff up for when the enemies die for a huge boost in your soul gauge. This can seem more complicated at first since you get all of these abilities at once, so hopefully this will help you get to that rotation that will make it really easy for you to understand. At level 72, we get Arcane Circle, which increases the damage of you and your party by 3%. This will get upgrades later as well. Level 74, we get Regress. This is just a handy ability for your teleports. Basically allows you to use Ingress or Egress, which then puts a portal that you can activate with the same ability and go back to where you were at originally. Great for moving in and out of bosses AoE attacks without having to run back. Level 76, Gluttony. This ability is on the same tier as your Soul Reaver abilities, Blood, Stock, and Grim Swath. Gluttony is its own cooldown though and is stronger ability overall, so you want to prioritize this first in trash pools and boss pools. Another fun fact that you need to know is it grants two stacks of Soul Reaver, which will allow you to use Gibbet and Gallows in the same proc or Guillotine twice. If you don't and you only used one because you're used to how Bloodstock works, then you will lose out on that DPS. So just remember that Gluttony gives you two. It's kind of in the name. Our level 80 job quest we get Enshroud, which gives us Enshroud Gauge. This basically is the next highest tier of damage abilities that opens up with the Enshroud Gauge. It's very vertical for Reaper's abilities. You get in Shroud Gauge by using Gibbet, Gallows, or Guillotine. You will get 10 per use. Once you get 50 in Shroud and activate, Gibbet, Gallows, and Guillotine will turn into Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, and Grim Reaping. Void Reaping and Cross Reaping is our Gibbet and Gallows replacement, and Grim Reaping is our Guillotine or AoE ability replacement. Basically, just the job abilities will look something like this. Soul Gauge to 50, 
prioritize gluttony first, then single target gibbet and gallows or AOE grim swath to guillotine until you hit 50 shroud gauge. From there, activate and shroud and it's a similar rotation. Single target void reaping to cross reaping or vice versa, the windows will proc like the earlier ability so you won't get lost. Or AOE grim reaping. This is it for now, but it is expanded even more. Very vertical, like I said, keeps building upon itself. 82, we get Soul Sow and Harvest Moon. Use Soul Sow between trash pulls for an instant cast and Harvest Moon in trash pulls once you get all of your abilities out of the way. It doesn't go anywhere, so no rush to use it. Level 86, we get Lemire Slice and Lemire Scythe, which is our extended Enshroud rotation. You can only use this when you get two stacks of Enshroud, basically after either using Void and Cross Reaping or two Grim Reapings. Lemire Slice is for single target version and Lemire Scythe is for the AoE version. I am using a practice dummy so then you are able to see it clearly as if we were in a dungeon it could be really easy to miss. Now don't worry, two more abilities and we'll finally be done. Level 88, Plentiful Harvest. Now this is not only a great damage ability, but it also gives you 50 in Shroud Gauge immediately, knocking you up to high tier abilities and bypassing the base Soul Gauge stage. But you can only access this ability every 120 seconds as it's directly tied to our Arcane Circle buff. And you have to wait about 6.7 to 7 seconds until you can use Plentiful Harvest after activating Arcane Circle. When you cast Arcane Circle, you will get stacks of Immortal Sacrifice by you and your party landing weapon skill or cast a spell in the 6 seconds this is happening, which can be up to 8 stacks, basically 2 GCDs per party member, including yourself. I wouldn't worry too much about the amount of stacks unless you're doing endgame savage content. Just cast it and get however many stacks you can and then use plentiful harvest for your instant 50 in shroud gauge. Last but certainly not least, Comunio. Deals unexpected damage of 1000 potency to one enemy and 60% less for all others. This is gigantic and is basically the end of your in shroud gauge rotation as it will consume all your stacks. So once you get in shroud gauge, your single target will look something like this. Cross reaping, void reaping, Lemur slice, cross reaping, void reaping, Lemur slice, communio. I feel like I'm really butchering that word. Your AOE shroud abilities will look like this. Grim Reaping, Grim Reaping, Lemire Scythe, Grim Reaping, Grim Reaping, Lemire Scythe, Communio. You want to make sure to use Communio only on the very last stack, or you will immediately lose all of your Enshroud Gauge stacks, which will plummet your DPS. I know this sounds like a lot for Reaper, but honestly, once it clicks for you, you will be doing so much damage for very little stress. If you got any value out of this video, then feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell to see all my future and present 1 to 90 guides that are coming out. If you have a particular job that I haven't done already, then feel free to comment that in the comment box down below so then I can see which ones you guys are looking for next. Also, I do want to give a huge thank you for those who are filling out the survey as it really helps support my dreams for just very little of your time. If you want to connect with me or join my public discord, then you can find the links for all that in the description box down below. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker tutorials or guides, then you can click here.